Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can isolate and boost just one color in a photo in Lightroom and get a really, really crisp and good looking result. Before we get started with this video, let's have a look and see the effect that we're seeking to achieve. This is the original image straight out of the camera and it was really almost a throwaway image except I really, really like these Christmas decorations in Vienna. But it didn't really do very much for me the rest of the photo so this is what I've done with it and what I've done is to remove all the other colors from the photo just leaving in the reds and that's what we're going to do in this video. Now you might be saying to yourself, I'm not sure that I have images that I can do this with, but I really think that it might pay to have a look in your photo collection because I went to my Vienna photos and within a few shots of each other were other images that I could do this effect with. The horse here, this light, I could pull out just the browns in this image and send everything else to black and white. There's this one which also has got some really nice red color and contrast in it. This one too. This one if it was lightened up, I've seen it in a lighter format, it's actually got this, the sign is really red and so is this and so we get that red black contrast. You might also look at an image like this where we'd save the blues and send everything else to black and white and of course fix the shadows up as we were there. And this image also in Vienna, crop it and maybe just keep the blues and send everything else to black and white. So it's worth having a look in your photo collection and see if you've got something that you can do this with. But here we're going to have a look at this image and we're going to make this out of it. So here is the image that we're going to be working on. This is the original out of camera shot. The first thing I'm going to do is look at the basic panel and have a look at my exposure here. I want to make sure that I've got a well balanced image. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick my white balance point. I'm just going to select a target neutral area here and just want it to be a little bit warmer than it is with me clicking on these areas. So let's see if I can find something a little bit warmer. Well, that's pretty good there. And if I want to, I could actually increase the temperature a little bit just to build some warmth back into the image. Dragging to the right here adds that sort of yellow tone to the image, which is a little bit warmer. Now the exposure is not bad, but I am saying that the contrast is out. It's really a little bit foggy in a way, this image. So I'm going to solve the fogginess a little bit with clarity. So I'm just going to dial up the clarity because this is a mid-tone contrast adjustment and it will really help get out the mid-tone detail in this image. Next I'd like to see what bringing the highlights down will do for the image. It will actually bring back a little bit of detail in some of the lighter areas. So bringing highlights way down is actually suiting me pretty well. But let's pick a white and a black point. So I'm going to hold the Alt key as I drag on the whites because I want to start seeing as I am over the left here just the hint of white in the image. Now this is way too much so I'm just going to back it off but I just want to pick my white point. So I'm thinking that about plus 12 is pretty good here. That's picking up some of the lights here but not blowing out the sky. I really want that sort of gray look. And now let's find the blacks again holding the Alt or Option key. Well, I've got blacks down here already so I'm not needing to adjust the blacks. It's pretty good in the blacks. Let's kick up the vibrance because we really want to see the red color in the image. So let's just go for that. Now to remove the color from the image, I'm going to the color area here. I'm not worried that it's not quite crisp or shiny enough yet. I just want to get the color out so I can see what I'm working with. So I'm going to the color panel here and actually to HSL. HSL and color are exactly the same, it's just that they're arranged differently. And here because I want to get the saturation out of the colors, I'm actually going to HSL and I'm going to click on saturation because that's what I want. Now I want to leave the saturation in the reds but I want to bring down the yellows. Take out all the color in the yellows and in the greens and the blues and aqua. Purple and magenta too. 
I just want a watch that I'm not losing too much around the bottom of this shape here. In actual fact I am. It's actually in the magentas a bit and I think I want to save that so I'm going to not take down the magentas. In fact I'm going to increase their saturation a little bit so I keep that shape. Let's have a look at the oranges. Well that's killing my sort of ready colour so again I'm going to leave the oranges as they were. Well that took out the yellows not the oranges. Let's put the oranges back. To get these sliders back to zero just double click on the name and the red's looking good too. So now that I've finished with the HSL I'm actually going to the colour because I want to isolate and work on these colours. So I've got the red channel here and I want to boost the saturation a little bit in the reds. And then let's go to orange because we retained the orange because we wanted to keep in this colour. So what I'm going to do is drag the orange slider more towards red. So anything that was orange in the image is now going to be more ready. And that's really going to help reinforce this contrast between the black and white sort of look to this image and the bright red colours in it. And let's go to magenta because we want to work on magenta as well. Dragging to the left would take this into the true magentas but dragging to the right will take magentas into red. So again we're reinforcing this red and black and white look. So I want to kick the magenta colours using the hue slider into red. These are typically not sliders you would use a lot but it's really helping us with this effect that we're after. Now let's have a look at the rest of the image and I'm a bit concerned that it's looking a little bit flat. So I'm going to adjust the contrast. I'm going to do that using a tone curve because there are some adjustments here that will probably help us. From the point curve list I can select medium contrast which is really giving this a boost or strong contrast. And I really think strong contrast is going to help us here. So let's close this down. Let's go back to the basic panel and see if there are any other adjustments that we want to make. Well I'm still working on this clarity look here and I am happy with the vibrance. I don't think I want very much more than that. But I may look at the contrast slider and just increase the contrast slider to again get that sort of glossy black and white look in the black and white areas so that we have the contrast with the other colours. So I get a sort of glossy black and white effect. You can see that the black and white areas of the image are a little bit sharper, crisper and a little bit nicer. I'm a little bit concerned here. I'm just going to check my blacks again. Mm, they're pretty good but I think I do want to get some detail out of the shadows. So I'm going to grab the shadow slider because that's going to give me a little bit of extra detail in this ball. I'm a little bit concerned that if I don't adjust the shadows it's a little bit too dark. So let's just drag the detail out of those shadow areas. We can also look at and should look at sharpening the image. So I'm going to the detail slider here. I'm just going to click here and click on an area like this so that I can see the area that I am sharpening. I'm going to drag out to a fairly high sharpening level. Now I think this image is a little soft. Yeah, it is a bit soft. So I'll probably go for a slightly higher than normal radius. So perhaps something like one it will do for this image. And then for detail I'll probably back that off. And I'm looking here at about a five for detail. And then we're going to mask it. So I'm just going to drag on the masking slider so that the white areas are in the areas that I want to sharpen leaving everything else unsharpened. So I'm thinking probably something around about 85 for this image. Some good sharpening there. And then just make sure that I increase the sharpening amount a bit. Now we do have some noise in this image. You can see it through here. It's luminance noise. It's black and white noise. So I'm just going to drag on the luminance noise slider to see if that's going to adjust it. Now with noise reduction you always want to err on the side of caution. So you don't want to add a lot of noise reduction if you don't need it. So I'm going to 
leave that at about 42. I'm also going to test color noise just because we removed color from the image. There's a chance that color noise will help us. The default setting here is 25 because that's what Lightroom does to raw images out of my camera. It just defaults to 25. Your settings may differ according to what you're shooting in. And I'm just testing to see if I'm seeing any difference by adjusting color noise. Well, there is a little bit, so maybe I'll boost the color noise reduction a little bit. And let's zoom back out again. Now I've pretty much got the effect that I came here looking for, but in places I'd really like to kill the color. I'm really not happy with some of the reds that I still have in the image. Well, that's easily solved with the adjustment brush. I'm going to click on the adjustment brush and I'm going to reset all the settings, which I can do by holding the Alt key and just clicking on Reset here. What I want to do is desaturate areas of the image. So I'm going to take saturation to minus 100 and that'll be desaturating. I'm going to pin this down here and now I'm going to desaturate those areas of the image where I don't want the color to come through. You can see there's a bit of yellow in here too. Just going to go check my color to make sure that my yellows, yeah, they are totally desaturated. I don't know where those yellows are coming from, but they're certainly there. So I'm just going to take it through the bottom of this image and just get rid of the color. Now we don't need a particularly soft brush or anything like that because we're really just hitting at the areas of color that we don't want to see color in. And if you go too far, all you need to do is to click on the Erase brush and go back and erase the effect that you've applied. So I'm going to take the color out where I don't want it so that we can focus on the color that I do want to see, which is all this red color through the middle of the image here. Let's make sure that I've got it where I want it to be. Well, yes, it's looking like it's going in here. When I'm done, I'll just click Done. Now I can also spot sharpen areas of the image using the adjustment brush. So if there's an area I want to sharpen, I can click on the adjustment brush. This time I'm going to reset the effect. I'm going to add sharpness. So we could come in here and just pick up some sharpness in the areas that we would like to see, perhaps just a little sharper than they were maybe in this scroll work here. But again, you can pick up the areas of the image that you want to draw attention to and just paint over that with the additional sharpness. And if you want a little bit of extra clarity at the same time, kick up the clarity. So that's actually adjusted this second brush, which is this one here just to bring in a little bit of extra clarity and a little bit of extra sharpness in areas where I want to see that. So let's have a look at the original image. This is the image out of the camera. It's a bit foggy. It sort of lacks contrast and really it was an okay image, but not something that I would really write home about. But this way, yes, I really like it. We're really drawing attention to these wonderful red colors that were in the streetscape and actually playing up the strengths of this image. And this is a wonderful result for an image like this. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.